Tammy Hill, very good to speak with you after being with you for a week. Now I've missed you for a week, even though I feel like I've been home for three weeks. Um, <laughs> uh, I had such a good time with you, and now you are my forever fishing partner. It's it's so Thank awesome. You, Great time. It was a blast. So awesome. So before this, what exotic fishing trips have you been on before going to Sportfish Panama Island Lodge? So the only other place I've been is Casa Vieja. And I went down there twice and did their solo anglers week. I went down in, um, I think, October of 22. And then I went in June of 23. Awesome. Yeah, that's a that's a great thing. And we're thinking about doing that for Sportfish Panama Island Lodge even more than we did we've been doing in the past because it's not economical to go by yourself. It's not fun right. to go by yourself. And right. and to meet new people. Look, I wouldn't have met you if we didn't get you to go as a single and hook that's you up right. with the rest that's of the group. Right. Yeah. So um what made you go on those Casa Vieja Lodge singles week trips? So I have, I've wanted to go to Casa Vieja for probably about five years and have been on my radar of wanting to go. And, and just like you said, like I can't afford to go and buy the whole, you know, pay for the whole boat by yourself. And it's not very fun, right? Like I don't, it's exhausting. I don't want to have to reel everything in. Um, and it's, you know, you don't want to just sit there by yourself. So uh, so I called them and they had some openings on their solo anglers week. And that felt like it would be affordable and I could actually meet some people that maybe share the same interest. Which they happen to. And that's how you. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. That's, that's how I, that's how I, uh, that's how I met you was uh, Robert Palmer fished. Uh, I I met him in October and then he was there again in June and he had been, he was working with you on um, this sport fish Panama trip and asked if I would be interested in going. And I, I said, heck yeah, I would love to go. Yeah. The next thing you know, I got this email saying, sign me up. And I was like, another girl. It's the best. Yeah. So I was totally, totally thrilled when you emailed me. Um, did now? Did you have any concerns about traveling as a single woman? And if you did, what did you do to protect yourself? Yeah, I, you know, I, I definitely did, and it was one of the reasons I kind of delayed a little bit with Casa Vieja. You know, it says as a single woman, you know, you've got you've got the language barrier. I don't speak a lot of Spanish. I've been working on it, but at the time, you know, I hardly spoke any. And then you've got you know the culture. Like, I don't understand the culture. I don't understand the geography of the city. Like, where's a good place to stay if I'm traveling by myself? Where do you go? How do you get there? Uh, you know, do, do you call Uber or take a taxi? Like, just kind of having to figure out all of those things. Uh, and then you're, you know, you just kind of go and you've got to have your fingers crossed. But doing something like Casa Vieja or Sportfish Panama, uh, you know, for me, it's it's so ideal because everything is planned out. Everything is figured out. They pick you up at the airport. So your transportation is taken care of. Your hotels, your lodging, like everything is taken care of. I know I'm going to be safe and I can just go and have a great time. Yeah. That's why we love working with these two lodges. That's. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no reason not to go. If you want to get right. your bucket. Even going with the. Right, or even going with a group like you, where you've set everything up and you've worked out all the logistics, and I know I'm going to be there with the group. I'm not going to be by myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, at no time you felt unsafe on either one of the trips? No, never. Yeah, I don't even think about that anymore. Like, we go to Mexico, everybody's like, oh, Mexico's safe. Each one of these trips that we go to, everything is planned out to, and I can tell you, this is what the person looks like. This is the phone number. Right. And that that's why you work with Half Past First Cast, even above and beyond the, the lodge itself. That's exactly right. All right. So why should more female anglers or would-be anglers, because we can always teach, take these trips? Yeah. I think, you know, it's just such a, it's, 
it's just such a fantastic way to kind of experience fishing and experience experience the world, right? You get to go to these places you may not ever get to go to. Like I never would have thought about going to Guatemala or Panama, uh, but they're just, they're such beautiful places. The fisheries are phenomenal. I mean, geez, we caught 180 pound tuna. Like where else am I going to do it? Yes, you're uh, insane. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, but, you know, just having that opportunity to be able to go and, and, and like we just talked about, to be able to do it where you're going to be completely safe and you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, I, you know, I would definitely encourage anybody who's interested uh, in, even to your point, in learning to fish. Like, it's a great, it's just a great experience and a great exposure to, you know, these different fisheries. Yeah, and I remember you asking a lot of questions. I asked them, too. To the um, to the guides, to the captains and the crew, they are so willing to give up information and help us. They want to have us have a good trip. That's exactly right. And they'll, you know, they, I really appreciated how they catered to whatever our needs were, whatever our wants were in, in terms of fishing. You know, if we wanted if we needed their help to cast out to make that long cast to hit that that blow up of tuna, you know, they were happy to do that. If we wanted to try it ourselves, they were happy to coach us and say, you know, here's the technique, here's what you need to do. Yeah, you're not on the boat yeah. like you feel like you've gone out on a, on an hour and a half ride and you're standing there with, you know, don't you don't know what's going on. You are right in right. the swing of things and you feel like you're a professional fisherman. I kind of you yeah. really do. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, you're little, and you yeah. caught. Thank you. And, <laughs> and you caught a with the help of our friend Lisa Vickers an enormous, yes, awesome. enormous 180 pound tuna. Now I don't yeah. know that you knew that that was going to happen. But before the trip, <laughs> before the trip, did you prepare in any way to battle these strong fish? So I, you know, I work out pretty regularly. Uh, I do, I do weight training, but I didn't, I didn't do anything special. Uh, you know, I've been to Casa Vieja, so I knew what it felt like to have a big, strong fish on the end of a line. Uh, and, you know, have learned the, the technique of, you know, Pull him up, reel down, pull up, reel down. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't really do anything special to prepare. Uh, and it, you know, having Lisa there was great. Like we could trade off and tag team, uh, and and you know, kind of bring it in together. So, pound for pound, sailfish versus tuna. Go. Tuna. Oh my God! What a fight. <laughs> You know, the sailfish are fun because they run, they go far out, they jump. Like, it's a, a fabulous show. Um, and that's, and it's just so much fun to watch them. Um, but the tuna, man, I mean, they'll, they don't want to be as much in the boat as much as you want them in the boat. So you're, you, you earn every inch of that line bringing them up. Yes. And by the way, you are the only one to catch a what on our trip. I think it was the sailfish. Yes, one. yes, ma'am. Yeah, so we caught that on live bait. So just kind of threw out some live bait off the back of the boat and didn't take more than a couple of minutes. And I didn't realize it was a sailfish at first. I just felt, you know, I felt something had taken the bait. I felt the pull on the line, you know, closed the bail and started reeling. And then it took off and jumped. And, you know, obviously the excitement of it was like, oh my gosh. Ah. So, uh, Probably took about maybe 15, 20 minutes to get to the boat. If that, yeah. But uh, the difference between yeah. those two fish is the sailfish kind of stay at the top of the water and the boat can go right. back towards them. But those tuna go for the they bottom. Go straight down, man. Yep. 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 And the worst is when you see them on the sonar, oh, it's at 80. And then it comes up to 50. <laughs> And then it goes back to 90. <laughs> and watching, yep. just watching the the line get go. Oh, they it works so, so hard to get back and it just all it just go. Yeah. We clocked your you and Lisa in at 
an hour and 58 minutes. Yeah. So I think that's pretty good. An hour a piece. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah. That's a yeah, lot I of work. Yeah, I feel like we're going to turn it off maybe every 30 minutes. Yeah. Well, when she first got it on, I remember, I remember in the video it said, Lisa, you've did that first time for 15 minutes. And I'm thinking to myself, 15 minutes all? <laughs> and then it was an hour and 45 yeah. minutes later. Oh, you girls. Right. Yeah. So what was your fishing highlight in Panama? Uh, it had to have been that tuna. Uh, <laughs> and it was, you know, I was not, when I signed up for the trip, you know, I, I looked at their website. I looked at the pictures. I thought rooster fish should be cool. You know, we're going to catch a lot of tuna. I never anticipated anything of that size. Yeah, that was, and um, was amazing. because you, so I, apparently when they catch that size, I was talking with Greg because he caught a 200 plus. Uh, I know. Well, that's, yeah. all by himself. He's incredible. He's really, yeah. <laughs> I give him so much credit. Oh my there. God. Yeah. Uh, apparently they take the big ones and they take the belly and they take it back to the yes. chef and he smokes the belly and he may he had we, we eat it smoked but he also makes that smoked tuna dip that was so so good and you were there I when i asked him every day i like every yeah. day I, I asked him for the recipe and he was like i don't give out recipes i give out what did he say technique Techniques, yeah. And then he and then he looked at me square in the face and said, "Where are you going to get tuna belly?" And I was like, "Good point." Yeah. Well, that's how he that's how he keeps his uh, recipes secret. Yeah, but man, that was good. That was well, okay. So besides that appetizer, what was your favorite meal in Panama? You know, uh, the conch ceviche was was a really was a really nice surprise because again I wasn't expecting anything like that and I've not I, it was nothing I'd ever had before and it was phenomenal it was so fresh uh, and just so you know so blunted and so flavorful I really enjoyed that that's cool that, no nobody's mentioned that before all right so not just weightlifting but like what preparation would you suggest suggest for anyone heading on a tuna trip in Panama? Oh, that's that's a great question. Um, Take your time. Yeah, I mean, I think you know that just I'm just kind of reflecting in my mind on you know kind of what it took in terms of the like it's muscle and endurance and it's a lot of it's. When you're casting, you know, there's a lot of arm and shoulder uh, and work in the popper. There was a lot of tricep and then, you know, reeling in those big tuna. I mean, man, that's all, I mean, that's all in your legs, mm -hmm. you know, just get, getting on that. Yeah, they give you that nice harness that really supports you and you can really pull against that. Um, I think just kind of working those muscle groups, like anything endurance training, uh, <laughs> if you're planning to catch a big tuna. Uh, I think all of that would be helpful. My plan for next time, um, I definitely want to focus more on my upper body and especially my arm strength because I think that's where I felt the most fatigue was just in all in the casting and working those poppers. Well, you better get out of it. You're going back in January. I know. I can't wait. I know. We can't Super wait excited. either. Um, all right. So your favorite items of clothing for traveling on a tropical fishing trip. Yeah, uh, you know, I loved, I, I brought uh, some of those like golf skirts that have the shorts and then the little skirt over them. And they're, yeah, so they were, they were the, the, um, the dry, dry fit type material. Um, and, you know, so I say super cool because I kind of had on the shorts. Um, I liked the look of the skirt. Like I, I just, I like that kind of look for myself. Um, and then, you know, we got rained on a couple of times, but I dried out super quick. Um, so it was just really super comfortable all day. So Tammy, I know you're going back with us to Panama in January. Can't wait. New group of people. Yes. New group of people. Yes. 
What's your next bucket list destination or species on your list? So I would love, um, so I'm really excited. Actually, I've never been to Alaska. Uh, and I have, I love salmon and I'm just super excited to go and kind of do that whole float plane trip and fly in on the float plane and, and do that whole kind of fishing for salmon. Um, and you know, I know that half past first cast does a trip, um, and gets that, you know, arranges those trips and I'm, I'm super excited to go. We're super excited to have you and we will most likely be going in August of 2026. Great. Yes. So Great. you guys just make it, you guys make it so easy oh. to just call you and say, Hey, I want to go. And you guys just take care of everything. And all I have to do is book a plane ticket and show up. Yeah. And fish. And fish. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. And we, and we become your, so you're now a new sibling of the half past first cast family. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm so thrilled to be part of the family. You're, you're, you've been adopted. All right. So I, listen, I need more women on our trips. Why do we yes. need more women to take the leap of travel to go fishing? I, you know, I wonder if a lot of women are afraid to go, that maybe, you know, it's going to be too intense or that, you know, I, I, I grew up in the construction industry. Uh, my whole career has been in the construction industry. So I've, I've experienced that where, you know, maybe men don't think you're capable or you can't do it. And that's couldn't be further from the truth. And, you know, having more women out there, uh, just kind of showing, you know, that we can do it. We can, we can reel in 180 pound fish. Uh, and if, you know, and women shouldn't feel, shouldn't hold themselves back from doing something like that because they feel intimidated. Yeah. We both put our, we put our pant. Well, I guess we put our skirts on the same way, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean, my husband always said, well, my husband, Pete always says, that he likes actually going fishing with the girls more because they listen, they learn, and True. they and they catch yes. more fish. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I know that's true. He he. That's why he, maybe he doesn't like me going on those trips because then there's too much competition. <laughs> I do remember the picture you showed me. Your fish was bigger. That's correct. So we just <laughs> we just love taking people to our favorite places for the first time to see your guys' yeah. faces and then to know you're coming back means so much. It means so much. It means we've done our job and to get you to your bucket list destination and then to have you come back, it's like going to Disneyland twice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so I don't want to hold you up. I know you're going someplace so you can um, go work to get on to our next trip with us. Yeah. <laughs> but we will be definitely hearing from you again and we'll see you in tons of more pictures because you're going to go on all our trips with us. No, I can't wait. I'm super excited. All right, family member. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Hannah.